Ryan Rucco, David Cohn, Meredith Morakovic with you, and now joined live by Yankees third base coach Phil Nevin. Going to chat while he works. How you doing, Phil? I'm great, guys. This is a lot of fun. I've been listening to you the whole game. <laughs> I love it. You've been piped in on the broadcast the whole time. No, it's now, like I was a kid back when going to games with my dad. We, you know, bring the radio and listen to Vince Scully at Dodger Stadium. I get to sit out here and listen to the game. It's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we can arrange this permanently for you if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to ask you this first because of the man in the box. I mean, there are a lot of ferocious right-handed hitters on this team. Do you ever get nervous standing down there? I do, I do. And I was thinking about that last inning if we were wired up. Uh, John Carlo came up and then Gary came up. Uh, and I have to go down the line when there's a runner at second base. And that's when it gets scary. To be honest with you, like a guy like Judge, he, he doesn't hit many balls down here that way. It's just his bat path. Uh, and he almost did right there, but. Um, <laughs> And, but Gary's at bat, if you saw, I mean, he, he chopped one over my head, he, he, he fouled one straight back that looked like it was, uh, it would have come this way. But when Gary's swinging it good, um, he's going to miss on this side once in a while. Uh, but going back to his at bat, I, I just wanted to point out that that was one heck of an at bat, one that uh, you're going to see, I hope, a lot more out of Gary this year. And one you probably hadn't seen maybe last year, carrying a lengthening in a bat like that. And that's foul. But just I love a, it. Just you can give us the bat. real time. Yeah, just a great at bat. He <laughs> saw a lot of pitches. Well, I know you. I don't know where you guys are doing the game from, but probably hard to see wherever you're at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Meredith's in Tampa, but Coney is in his bar in Florida, and I am in Stamford at our Yes Network studio. So yes, you are definitely going to be the first to know if it's fair or foul. So we appreciate that. So Coney's just sitting in his bar, huh? That's it. That's right where I belong. Right. Yes. Yes. Right where I belong. <laughs> Judge went around there. Hey, Phil, you just brought up Gary. I want to follow up on that. I mean, obviously, there was so much attention about his season last year and the struggles, but he has looked so good to start this spring. What has struck you most about Sanchez and getting out of the gates here in Tampa? Well, I, I think just having a normalcy of a spring training. It, last year, what people don't realize is we made a lot of changes defensively with him, um, and we started that last spring. Uh, and to get cut short and then not have that time with with Tanner uh, and then to kind of throw it at him in a short spring training we had in New York with really no games to play before we started the season. That's a, that's a hit. Stay fair, ball. Stay fair. Pick it up, buddy. Oh, yeah. I think it's still fair. <laughs> <laughs> a perfectly laid down bunt from Aaron Hicks. Yeah, get, getting bad. And that was a great bun, by the way. Some, you know, they shift a lot on Hicksy. It's something we've talked about. He's put in a lot of work on his bunting game, and it just opens up the field when you're going to have a third baseman having to play more over here. Teams are going to know that he just did that, uh, and if he can just get it down on this side of the field in a shift, it's going to be a hit every time. And obviously, you guys know who's coming up behind him. So, <laughs> uh, going back to Gary, guys, he's, you know, the head's clear. Um, it really is. The at bats he's took already this spring. Um, so impressive. I point out two balls really for me that he's hit. He drove a ball over the center field wall at one of the first couple of games, and then he hit one actually to right center, which you know we haven't seen out of him. Gary's a great hitter, um, more so than just a power hitter. And when he uses all fields, he's one of the best in the game. Popped up foul ground right side and the basket catch made by Evans for the second out. Meredith. Now Luke Voigt stepping to the plate, Phil, and he had mentioned that he wants to work on his consistency in the batter's box this year. Have you seen anything different from him as far as his approach is concerned to start the spring? Uh, I, I, not necessarily from my angle. Uh, I know what he's worked on. I know what he's talked about. Uh, he's saying a lot of the right things. He's just somebody that is never going to be complacent in what he does. Um, obviously, he had a great year last year in, the, in the, the short time that we played, but he wants to be a complete player, not just in the box. Nobody works harder defensively. He's out here every day working on what he does with the pitchers, his ground balls, covering for everything over at first base and his footwork. And he just missed that. Um, but as aggressive as he is, 
uh, for a big guy, it's amazing. And as far as he hits the ball and as many home runs as he's hit, uh, his his discipline at the plate, the way he controls the strike zone. I mean, we see him a lot go up there and whack at the first pitch, and then next thing you know, you got a five, six, seven at, uh, pitch at bat going, and that's really the case for our whole lineup. And I heard you guys talking earlier about moving, you know, passing the baton, and that one's foul again, guys. <laughs> I, I love how you can keep us honest, Phil. It's tremendous. Yeah, I can tell over here. They go right over my head. So, um, <laughs> But just passing the baton, keep having great at-bats. And something Marcus and PJ stress. And these guys, I mean, one through nine, do such a great job of controlling the zone. Uh, just pitching up, picking out good pitches to swing at, taking good swings at them. You know, take Gary's at-bat last inning, uh, a number eight hitter in the lineup, which Gary wouldn't hit eighth for most teams. but. Uh, a pitcher got to work that much, and I heard you say, probably catch Luke in the background there, I think, but uh, <laughs> we can get, we got another inning together, right? <laughs> we do. Nice We're going to be back together bottom fourth, all right? Yeah. All right. We'll talk to Phil Nevin again at the bottom of the fourth, so don't go anywhere. Phil Nevin, nice enough to join us again, is David Bednar, the new pitcher for the Pirates. Phil, you need some runs this inning because the third inning was wildly entertaining, but it went too quickly. So get the boys to score a few this inning, all right? Yeah, we need a lot of action. We can talk more. Uh, <laughs> we can holler at the guys running around third, get a handshake. We got we got some new handshakes on home runs this year. So. Well, Phil, Glaber Torres at the plate right now. He's a guy that worked a lot this offseason, not only defensively, but on the offense as well. How has he looked to you so far this spring? Best I've seen in, in four years that I've been here, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I don't think anyone's going to get there. Fly ball right center is put away by Stokes. No, he really has. His, his, him, him preparedness wise, uh, this is the best I've seen him as far as going about his business each day. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time on the backfields, uh, on the infield with Carlos. Uh, Hitting him ground balls, and uh, he's really in tune. He's he's uh, he's worked hard. He's, his body, obviously, as you guys can see, uh, looks good. Um, he's really applied himself, and he wants to be a very good shortstop. You hear him talk about wanting to be uh, in that mix of the guys they talk about, the Lindors and Correas, and um, and he should be, to be honest with you. He's that caliber of a player. Um, and he's starting to realize that he can be that on an everyday basis. Uh, I think we're going to see a, a really good Glaber Torres this year. I'm excited for him. Yeah, Phil, have you thought about the potential of your son getting to the big leagues with the <laughs> Orioles at this point? You know, I mean, Tyler, Tyler Nevin, your son, yeah. obviously, a great prospect, and working his way up, get close, knocking on the door. How are you going to feel if you're, if you're coaching against your son on the other side of the field in a big league game? You know, Coney, I, yeah, I, the other day uh, he, he got in at bat against them. We, we hit him, actually, but that's the first time we've been on the field like that together. And if it's any sort of foreshadowing of a regular season at bat, you know, Cabrian's standing 20 feet from me here, and, and we all know Charlie so well, and I've known Cabrian since really the draft. He was the same draft as my son. And I tell you, it'll be an emotional day, uh, as competitive I, as I am. Um, there's a ball here right to him. So, uh, as competitive as I am, obviously it won't take away from me wanting to win a game or anything like that. Um, just like when they were kids, both of my boys playing card games or board games, I never let them win, pool or nothing. <laughs> it's just the way we were in our house. But I, I honestly don't know how it'll be. I, I you know, I, I've talked to Cash when I first got the job. You know, I'm not missing my son's first big league game. Um, Hopefully it's against us, but then I, geez, I don't know how I'm going to feel in the dugout. It's, uh, you know, watching him just take the field the other day, I, I got, uh, yeah, it gets you a little bit, really, because you just, you know, it's your kids, so you, you just, you, know, you want them happy in life and doing things that they love to do, and he just loved playing baseball, and he's always wanted to be a big leaguer, and, you know, we're, we're, he's close, um, you know, and if and when that day comes, it's, it'll be special for all of us, sure. We look forward to seeing that Tyler a, a first round pick back in 2015 and we look forward to a Yankee Oriole matchup and maybe miking up Phil and seeing the emotions of that day. <laughs> Phil since you 
you, you know, you're giving us some insight. Talking about the handshakes you can have this year. Who is the player on the team most likely to blow through a Phil Nevin stop sign? That'll be Luke, without a doubt. Uh, you saw it happen a couple <laughs> days ago. Luke, Luke thinks he's uh, Luke thinks he runs like uh, Guardy maybe sometimes or. Um, and I love him. I love him to death. He's always trying to push the limits on a lot of things, which is, which is why what makes him such a good baseball player. Uh, I'd rather have a, a million guys like him that you got to kind of throttle back a little bit instead of guys you got to kick in the rear, as Coney, as you know. There's one. See, guys, this guy, this is the guy that gets me a lot. <laughs> That's just a little chopper. If you remember one in L.A. a couple years ago, I'm standing back this far talking to the umpire, and Tom thinks I'm talking to him right now. But um, <laughs> if you remember in L.A., he hits a line drive at me that yeah, I figured I was far enough back. I'm agile enough still, maybe, uh, get out of the way. And it was on me before I could even start moving. I got my hand up just in time. It knocked me down at Dodger Stadium, which is home. So I got, uh, I got, I got ragged a lot on that one. I was going to say, Phil, I'm sure they never let you live that down after they knew you were OK in the clubhouse. <laughs> no, I heard a lot about it, sure. <laughs> well, Phil, we so appreciate the time, these two innings. Hope to do it again sometime, man. All right, sounds good, guys. Thanks.